very happy oh. to have you here yeah I so hello and welcome to one more series of uh, school synergy workshop series uh, one more session of school synergy workshop series and we have been doing these school synergy workshop series uh, since 2019 uh, in that year we were doing face to face workshops and since 2020 the pandemic we have been doing online sessions since august and the objective of this session is that we get a, a platform where we can share ideas from teachers teacher educators and the spaces from university and uh, schools can come together and exchange their ideas we get to uh, share our own experience and also learn from teachers experience so i do encourage all the teachers and students to uh, share their ideas share their experience and to also take these ideas and implement in their classrooms we uh, and we would be very happy to hear about your experience we have also started a telegram group uh, which many of you have joined it's over 200 people right now and we encourage you to join that if you want to continue the conversations beyond this session discuss with your peers with other teachers about what is going on in this session itself okay so today we have a very interesting uh, session by geeta ramanujam and it's the story way so it's about storytelling and i'm very very interested in knowing what it is about i um, invite my student uh, Chitra Kumari, who is doing B.Ed. M.Ed. Integrated course at our Center for Excellence in Teacher Education, and um, uh, she is a student there. Uh, myself, I'm Ruchi Kumar at the same institute, Center for Excellence in Teacher Education at TIS Mumbai, and I'm a faculty there. So, uh, Chitra, why don't you introduce uh, Geeta Ramanujam to all of us? Sure. Welcome, everyone. Uh, so today we have Geeta Ramanujan ma'am with us and uh, she, Geeta ma'am is a pioneer of the storytelling moment in India to use it as a tool for learning and has set up storytelling centers across India besides being an executive director of, of Kathalya Trust she has also been a master trainer for accredited sto storytelling course courses nationally and internationally. She's also the Indian coordinator for the International Storytelling Network. So now here I welcome ma'am. Please ma'am. Uh... Hello. Uh... Hello ma'am. Hello Ruchi. Uh, thank you for that. Wonderful... Hello. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. And thanks Chitra. Uh, I just have a small request if everyone can uh, or most of you can have your video on uh, it would always help especially because storytelling is more uh, interactive and it's also uh, about a session that can be quite participatory okay so uh, anyway we are all offline it would be best offline but since we are online i think i can at least see you inside your matchboxes okay <laughs> So thank you everyone. I see an overwhelming response. I'm uh, honored. Uh, uh, thank you for inviting me again, uh, Ruchi. I, I'm, I'm feeling very uh, honored to be here uh, today in front of all of you. Uh, so before we begin, I just want you to uh, see a very small one minute uh, video of Katalia. Uh, because I come from Catalia, which was established in 1996. So it's about nearly 25 long years that uh, we have uh, been in the field of education and storytelling. So just a little clipping for you before we begin the session. Just uh, remember to share the sound, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. It's not being shared, ma'am. We can hear. Yeah. 
just a very short uh, thing uh, yeah Natalia's, yeah so the main uh, the main uh, baseline i would say is uh, yesterday i just uh, shared a story of prahlad charitram which is uh, the story of prahlad uh, and uh, narasimha from our bhagavatam and uh, though it sounds very traditional and mythological i try to bring a new flavor to that story because it's all about ego and humility and also what we are all made up of, isn't it? And in that I said that, you know, this is the only avatar where God, because he was uh, waiting for this child, this child was so confident, it's about belief. And this child says, you know, my God will be everywhere. That's how the child believes and trusts the mother also, no? My mother, my mother, she's my mother, right? So in the same way, the mother has a, a feeling for the teacher. Uh, she's my teacher. Whatever she says is the word. Yeah. So that's the belief and the main core essence of a story, of a lesson, of communication, of human bonding, of connectedness is all based on one simple thing called belief. And so from our mythological times, this little eight-year-old boy He's so confident. He's saying, my Narayana will be everywhere. Now, Hiranya is very angry because being a father and saying that this little boy is so foolish. He's a blockhead. He thinks Narayana is everywhere. Tell me. He teases. He bullies his own son. He, will he be in this leaf, in this, in this flower, in this, in this tree, in this wall, in this pillar? And he says, yes. In this pillar? Yes. So now God is very scared, you know, because he has to fulfill the belief of this little child. So it takes a lot of effort for God also to realize, I mean, where do I get in? Do I get into the pillar? Is he going to show the leaf? Is he going to show the flower? So what he does is he gets into every atom of the universe. You see, this is the only avatar where he actually is omnipresent everywhere because he takes that trouble because he does not want to let down the belief of this child. And that's why they say anywhere where Hiranyakashpu would have banged, God would have still come out. Yeah. So I believe that stories, stories are like that. Stories are all around us. They're everywhere. They're in every atom of the universe. And how you use, how do you deduce, take this story. How does the story get into you? What do you take? from this story is most important. And each one has their own way of taking this tool called storytelling and using it. See, every tool is for using or wielding it to see that it, we suit, it suits. For some little kids, it might be performance-based, yeah? Because children are very uh, enamored by uh, props by, by uh, showing things, by a voice, right? When you say, uh, suddenly they, it will catch their attention, right? So little kids, little kids especially, even adults, we all have a child inside us, right? So we're all, we're all enamored when there's something which is uh, not very dramatic, but something different. So here is one platform where a storyteller becomes everything. She's an educator. She is like a, a facilitator. She's a teacher. She's a mother. She's a parent. She's a communicator. She's a spiritual person because you're molding the thought process of the little child. That little child is looking at the teacher like a 70 mm picture, isn't it? And for her, her or him, this 
teach us everything. If you're homeschooling, then it's the parent who's everything, correct? So they look up at the adults. Any child, even physically, they look up at the adult in order to learn. Now, this has nothing to do with gender. It's whether it's a, a mother, father, the parent is a, the teacher is a male, female, uh, whatever gender, nothing matters because what the teacher says, what the teacher is, makes a lot of difference. What do I mean when I say what a teacher is? What are we made up of? All cells. We have the lung, we have the heart, we have the everything. Now I can't say, hey, heart, come on, go. Deliver what you have to deliver. Come on. Imagine this whole body has different parts. But when I say I am a teacher, which part are we referring to? Isn't it? When I say I am a teacher, I am a mother. Okay. So I am a teacher means I, along with all these parts and these thousands of cells in our body, I am a teacher, you say. Okay, now we have so much love for ourselves. You just take a little pin. Somebody comes and says, where shall I poke you? And you say, no, no, don't poke me here. Don't poke me here. Don't poke me here. The COVID, well, it has to be given in the arm, but it's still painful, isn't it? Whatever it is, we are so united in our selves. But if you have to poke your neighbor, you'll say, it's okay. Take that pin and just give him a poke. Isn't it? So we are not different. I wanted to say this, that it's not one rule for me, one rule. So the internal aspects of a good human being is the foremost important step for any profession, especially when it comes to teaching and what we used to call in olden days as integrity. Isn't it? How I am aligned from within. So I always say, especially when you're a communicator, when you're a teacher and a storyteller, how I am from within matters a lot, which means my voice has to be appealing to people. And where does this voice come from? It is not lip talk. Hello everyone, I'm here to teach you something very important today. I'm going to show you a little caterpillar here and I'm going to tell you, uh, does this remind you of anything? Do you see the difference? Because I am an actor. I can enact. I can be two types of myself. But you know, the best teacher is the one who's sincere from within. Yes? I mean what I say. So where does my voice come from? From beneath my belly. And they say that part is a very important part, which sets the tone of the way you speak. The way you sing. Hey, little hen, when, when, when will you lay me an egg for my tea? Hey, little hen, when, when, when will you try to supply one for me? This is a farmer asking a little hen. He's giving respect to that hen. He's asking that hen. And he's asking the hen, will you lay me an egg for my tea now? But the hen is a very, very nice little bird. And she says that, remember, I, I told you that I'll help you with your field work, isn't it? So now how can I lay an egg for you? Huh? Buck, buck, buck. You already gave me so much work. Get into your nest. Do your very best. Get it off your chest. I can do the rest. No, 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 but, but I have to first dig your field. What do you want? Tell me. You want an egg first or you want uh, to, uh, you want me to help you to dig the field? So now the farmer says, oh, I'm sorry. Why don't you go dig the field? And now you know that story. Because that little red hen had so much compassion for this farmer that he started to dig that field. And he laid that first seed. And when that seed was put into the ground, 
he wanted some water and he wanted some little little sunshine right so now the old father is quite old he can't walk that's why he's taking the help of the little red hen so the hen goes bop, 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 and it goes near the pond and near the pond there's one whack 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 and there's a and the okay there is this duck and the duck is such a proud duck now the hen says oh i know what you're going to ask quack, 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 quack. i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i can't help you and so the duck goes in and then comes the pig and the pig says oh no oh no i can't help you i'm so sorry i'm too busy i'm in a meeting you see and then of course comes in the the holy cow and the cow says oh i'm so tired today <laughs> comes the goat and the goat also refuses and so you see the little red hen decides self help is the best help and he takes her water and he comes and pours it in the seed and the seed starts growing because the seed is dancing it has grown shoots and roots and so it starts growing and now it's time that you need some more water again all the animals and birds refuse and now it's time to harvest it and by this time our little red hen is a little tired and he's waiting and the farmer suddenly feels again very hungry he needs his breakfast so he comes and says hey little hen when 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 will you lay me an egg for my tea oh no not yet i'm so tired i have to do a little harvesting okay please let me go now so then he does the harvesting and then finally takes that crop puts it in the uh, mill grinds it and then the dough for the chapati is ready and he's about to make you can call it a bread you can call it chapati whatever you want as long as there's something to eat right and it's at this time that the duck comes quack 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 can i have some of it oh no that's that says the hen and of course the pig comes says no the mm -hmm. <laughs> no because you didn't help me to sow the seed you didn't, didn't help me to harvest it you didn't help me with anything it's so fair that you only come for the share of the product which is the food and then the farmer get into your nest do your very best get it off your chest i can do the rest yeah i'm ready so there is an egg okay so this is just the relationship that we have with the little red hen and the farmer and all the other animals it also brings us a lot of concepts don't you think you can connect this see why children are interested in the story and the song and they're listening to your voice and your sounds and your music they are subtly learning something what do you think they have learned can anyone say yes yes i can see zenoba right yes zenoba uh i think that was wonderfully uh, related i enjoyed it thoroughly okay. uh, there was a lot of learning that was happening okay. um, one is learning to share and cooperating yes. uh, doing things together but uh, there was also the idea i mean i may i just say it or should i leave it for others to say oh you please go ahead please go ahead uh, i also felt that there was a lot of learning about how the seed grows how what what is the toil that happens 
uh, the ego of the hen, uh, a lot of things were coming out in the story. Very good. Fantastic. Is it Zenobia? Yes. Thank you, Zenobia. It was wonderful because you see, this is another thing. Unless you know that somebody is listening, somebody is listening to your story, you cannot go forward, isn't it? So for every storyteller, the most important person is the listener. So when, when you have a listener, then it's a two-way process. And that's why storytelling is beautiful, okay? Because it's not like talking to the walls. You know, somebody is listening there and somebody is saying, aha, mm -hmm. oh, I see. Wow, let's clap. Yeah? All right, great. So this is just a little example that I wanted to share with you because in a story, you have a package of many things. It is not only the concept of academics, but I don't know if you realize there was an emotional connect between the little red hen and the farmer too, isn't it? Because he was ready to wait. The farmer was ready to wait for the hen. The hen was ready to wait for the farmer. Yeah. It also shows respect. Respect was there. Absolutely. absolutely. Respect was there. And at the end, it also showed that we share the fruit only with the one with whom you have that connect. Fantastic. Yeah. Very good. So uh, there is, I sometimes add another version. Now, see, this is something we can do. Again, as teachers, we have the liberty. We can say, you know, even though all those, the, the, the duck, the, tell me who all, the duck, then, the pig. The pig, very good. And uh, the, cow. Uh, the cow. And uh, the goat. Very good. See, you also learn all that, right? So uh, when, when the four of them didn't help anywhere, uh, yet in the end, the hen thinks about it and says, okay, next time, make sure, be sure that you're going to help somebody when they ask for help. Anyway, come over and let's all share the bread together. You could also end it like that. Yeah? So, even yes. though, so it's not that you have to do kit for that. You can also show them that even though your friends didn't help, you, could, you don't have to retaliate. You can say, oh, yes, come on. So how we end it depends on your attitude. So another important part of storytelling is what is your attitude? The teacher's attitude makes a lot of difference, yeah? And I'm not saying the duck was a bad duck. The goat was a mean goat. I'm not giving those adjectives because it's the teacher who puts the words in the, on the, in the, in the minds of the kids. And then they start using those expressions, saying, my mother is such a mean person. My, my, my father is such a bad father, yeah? So let's try to avoid all those adjectives. Let's not be prejudiced. So we, as teacher, as Anna, look at them. Hello? have a huge responsibility. Remember this. We have the freedom. Imagine what a lovely combination. We have the freedom to take the class the way we want. Because I, what I utter, what I speak, what I tell, the words that come out from my mouth is going to be the Bible for my children. Yes, so I have to be prepared. I have to practice. I have to be clear in my own internal self. And of course, next comes the external techniques of a storyteller. Yes? But within, when I am very calm and I am composed and I am sure, I am compassionate, I'm clear, I have belief in myself, then my external techniques is not a problem at all. So I think we need to know our own stories first before we start telling people other stories. Yeah? And don't underestimate children. They are very smart. They're very, very smart and they know exactly what you're speaking, what you're telling. Yes? So, the first steps of being a good storyteller is to be a good listener. Okay? And I love that word 
because uh, can somebody spell listen, please? L I S T E N. Very good. Mrinan, is that Mrinan? Yeah. Thank you, Mrinan. L I S T E N. Now, I want you to do me a small help. Uh, yes. Can you just jumble that L I S T E N and give me another word? Uh, Silent. Very good. <laughs> Wonderful. So you see, listen and silent composes of the same number of letters. What beautiful, isn't it? How many teachers are actually silent? I'm not saying verbally. I'm just saying within. Okay. So we also need to be silent if you want the children. Keep quiet. We tell in the class. Are you quiet? I wonder. Huh? Are we chattering from inside all the time? Isn't it? God is my mother-in-law. I don't know why she had to come right in the morning when I was getting out. Yeah. So we have so many things harboring within ourselves. How is my tone when I talk to the children? Have you noticed that? As parents, as children, I mean, as uh, teachers, uh, have you just looked at the way you speak? I know for, I'm, I'm not saying all of you are like this, but I know most of them, especially when uh, the schools were run, okay? Please mute. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, so I don't know if you've uh, noticed how you wake up a child, uh, even as a parent. I, I've seen most of them. The, the first thing that the child who's sleeping hears is, Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. And now the child is, he's in his dream, right? So he gets up, mm, go on, mommy. Mm, get up, it's getting late for your school, get up. And then the child goes, I know, how is he brushing his teeth? Mm, come on, fast. The milk is getting cold, your bus will come anytime. Go have your milk now. Did you sharpen? Now? You're keeping your timetable now. Oh my God. Pom, 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 pom. Bam, 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 bam. See, I told you. I told you the buses come. Now, go rush. Now, don't sharpen your pencil. Now you're keeping your timetable. And she puts everything in the bag. And oh my God, your shoelace is not yet tight. It's okay. You run down now. The child is not perturbed at all. It's the parent whose blood pressure is going up, isn't it? And... The child is just looking at the mother like no expressions. And actually, he actually now I'm... also we have the same story, except that it is five minutes before the online classes start. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So you see what happens is now this child every day. The mother's BP is from 120 to 130, 140 rising. But for the child, he still somehow hasn't changed in the way he's moving, going down to the bus. Oh, he gets into the bus and it's early morning most of the time. So they're sleeping in the bus and they arrive in the school. And then we teachers in the school, right? We are those great people who have to monitor our children. So as the child is getting down and coming, I say, hmm. Again, you haven't tied your shoelace even today. I don't know what, yeah. These parents, why can't they tie a shoelace and send that child to school? This is what the teacher comments. And then the child is looking at the teacher. Now, don't stare at me like that. Go and sit in your place. Tie your shoelace and go. Now, for the child, if you, under, if you, if you realize... The teacher is not different from the parent. You know why? He's only listened to... In his mind, his imagination, when you're all saying, go, he imagines you're a witch and you're doing... That's how the child imagines. So the child says, oh, this is one witch, that's another witch. Okay? And now he goes to his place. And there, one of his little friends sitting next to him says, you know, today my mommy, uh, my mommy also said, right? 
so you you find that they find the honest with each other okay they are, they are very happy when they are with each other because they identify that and this is all about how our tone is isn't it and i call this kind of listening actually when the child listens it's called instructional listening okay because the child is only listening to instructions that's the rhythm have you any time apart from instructing the child apart from asking him what to do and what not to do have you just tell told him listen i want to talk something just between you and me it's a secret okay that only both the question come on child is very curious and then in the evening you quietly take him you make him sit near you and say you know when i was about 5 years old or 6 years old when we were living in that uh, street on mg road uh, i used to climb up the trees and eat mangoes yeah the child is saying yeah, mummy tell me more tell me about your childhood he comes closer to me and this is how uh, the schooling was in our old gurukul systems it is called upanishad upanishad means sitting close by and listening now the child feels the energy of the mother feels the energy of the uh, whole body of the self of that compassion and what i am telling as a mother or a teacher is not from the syllabus but it's out of the syllabus from another side of myself called the emotional side isn't it so while academics has its place what stands out for a child ask anyone i'm going to ask any one of you if you go back into your childhood and you remember i ask you uh, what is it that you remember the best can one of you share just go back into your childhood and tell me what you remember especially between the first 10 years can i share Who's manisha here yes yes manisha please uh, it's more of the mischievous moments when you done and uh, you feel very proud about it uh, are you i felt the same yeah. Yeah. yeah you are able to see that first yes that's the yeah. first thing i see So uh, where 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 was this where I mean where uh, so I stayed in Mumbai grew up there okay and we would uh, go down to play and in the next building there was a tree which had these small little amlas which come okay and uh, nobody would climb up to feeling yes. scared that auntie might scold but auntie would never scold and I would always climb up the wall pick up a bunch for myself and then share it with everybody but those are the things I remember the most ah uh-huh. uh, <laughs> yeah. So you see, uh, I'm sorry to ask you, but how old are you? Uh, I am fifty-one. Three. At fifty-one, if I ask you what you remember the best, and with happiness, it is this memory, isn't it? Would you say yes. I remember my science book, page number thirty-eight in sixth standard, which taught me about titration and? Uh, uh, no, please. Oh no, no, oh, buddy. You know I have finished. Yeah. a uh, 140 batches of my academy course in the past 24 years uh, we are going to complete 150 soon and it, none of the batches anyone recalled any thing from a textbook in the school then why are we spending 10 hours in a school imagine yeah so sure. yeah ma'am i would disagree actually uh, a bit because uh, actually a few mu- few uh, days back before the quar- i mean during the quarantine i should say uh-huh. one of my colleague was recalling that there was a story in cbsc book uh, kuchu where i mean and the, my glasses were like this so uh-huh. uh, kuchu's glasses we used to have a lesson right. so i said see my glasses are here and we used to have a lesson kuchu's glasses 
Do you okay. remember he uh, his whole family you know searches for the glasses and he and finally he finds that it's actually with him and the wife is uh, asking his wife asking his children correct i so, know so uh, there was one lesson during our school days so one of my colleague said oh thankfully you remember actually i asked so many people about it but nobody recalled and then we suddenly recalled so many lessons you know the stories especially okay. like you okay. you are like i wanted story to correct you Yeah. I remember I asked you did the son anyone remember a math or a science <laughs> thing you don't, you don't recall a subject you still yeah, yeah, yeah. only a story <laughs> yeah that's true I was trying to say that the story uh, that the is what I was actually that doesn't matter because if it is in a book or, because I remember Cinderella still which yeah. I got at least okay so I'm just saying we try to put so much pressure on yeah, yeah. people that I agree yes yeah but so how so one of my challenges was from a teacher to when i became a storyteller was one of the main things i wanted to do is how do i make even science and math and geography and history interesting because i know that children are interested in stories so can we do it a story way okay the story way that's why i call it the story way yeah uh, is it possible but also not deliberately do it but by the way just like how you told just now sangeeta that when you had your glasses the recall came right so association is it are we able to associate and then i'll i'll give you another very small example when i was growing up i also grew up in bombay and uh, uh, we had very strict teachers and uh, the, the, i went to a school called the little angels high school uh which is near the sign uh, circle uh, sign matunga place um after fees was only 1 rupee a month and uh, very strict teachers but very kind teachers now my mother uh, she came from a place called uh, tanjavur in tamil nadu and uh, my father was also uh, from chennai but uh, my father was uh, a gold medalist in english so he wanted us to you know be good with our english language But my mother was also very particular that I am I should uh, not forget my mother tongue. Now the the second language was Hindi and third language was Marathi. So who will teach me Tamil at home? Yeah, but my mother was very particular, and the best way she felt, which I still uh, think is the best way to learn a language, is when you speak that language. Because when you speak and listen to that language, you you get the words right. So. she was a very busy mother because we are two joint family and we had to pack lot of dabbas and all that and i still remember i do i quote this i i quote it every time uh i was the oldest in the house and i had to every day uh, pack vegetables uh, this was hardly when i was 7 or 8 years old and i had to grind the chutney for her okay so by by grinding chutney the first thing she would she would be very, very busy and you know those ammi you have that stone in those days no grinder so you like to grind so she tell me listen only one sir this is only one time and of course we are had fear but i learned that listening because of that because if i ask her ah she give me one thud that was the only no child rights and all those those times okay the only answer was one thud so at that time she'll say listen don't go so fast and when you come to the center go slow and it should be this consistency so i should be a keen listener and take it off and wash it and wipe it and don't be like the house fly that forgot its name she would add that now in tamil it means don't be like that e that forgot its name okay so i was why did that e forget its name i wanted to ask my mom but you know it's a wrong time to ask because i am getting ready to go to school so i used to go to the school thinking why is this e forgot its name why this e forgot its name go through the school and then come back in the with the same thought in the evening i would come back and then my mother was in a very good mood and i used to ask her amma amma tell me you know why that e forgot its name oh did i tell that she said yeah yeah in the morning you said no don't be like that e and then she would tell the story in tamil and this and the story would go korokora kandre கன்றின் தாயே தாயின் உடையா உடையின் கையில் கோலே கோலை சுத்தும் கொடியே கொடி வளரும் குளமே குளத்தில் நிற்கும் கொக்கே கொக்கு பிடிக்கும் மீனே மீன் பிடிக்கும் வலையா வலையின் கையில் சட்டி சட்டி பிடிக்கும் கொயவன் 
பயவன் தரும் மண்ணே மண்ணே வளரும் புல்லே புல்லை திங்கும் குதிரையே என் பெயர் என்ன Now this house fly, what we call is a makki. E in Tamil is this makki. Now just listen to this. Huh? The makki goes to the calf because it says, I forgot my name. So it goes to the calf and says, oh calf, oh calf, tell me now what's my name, what's my name. Tell me what's my name, tell me what's my name. And now the calf says, how do I know your name? Huh? Go and ask my mother from whom I drink milk. Okay. So it goes to the cow. And the cow says, how do I remember your name? Ask the stick that drives you. Now the stick says, how do I know? Ask the creeper that grows around me. The creeper says, ask the pond in which I grow. The pond says, ask that crane that stands whole day on one leg. The crane says, ask the fish which I eat. The fish says, ask the net that falls over me. The net says, ask the fisherman who throws the net. The fisherman says, ask the pot in which I collect the fish. Now the pot says, ask the potter who makes me into a pot. And now the pot says, ask the mud, which I, the potter says, ask the mud which I mix with the clay. The mud says, ask the grass that grows over me. Now by this time, this E, you know, is asking everyone, what's my name? What's my name? It gets fed up. It gives up hope. And just when it's about to return, there is a horse. The horse comes and does, <laughs> ah, I remember my name now goes back home. Now the next question that my mother would ask me. First, she was very good with maths. So she'll ask me, tell me how many characters? Did anyone count the characters? No. Because we are, I was so absorbed in the story, right? Then my mother, since she was in a good mood. 13, 13 characters. Very good, Sangeeta. Fantastic. Okay. So, then she'll ask me the next question, which I want you to answer. The house fly goes first to whom? The calf. Oh, calf. 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 Very good. Uh, From calf. the calf, calf to the? Cow. 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 Mother cow. cow. Okay. From the cow to? Stick. The stick. 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 The cow. Huh. The, stick. the stick to? Creeper. 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 Creeper, Creeper. Creeper to? Pond. 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 Very good. Pond to? Crane. 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 Crane to the? Fish. 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 Fish to the? Fisherman. Fisherman. Fisherman to? Pot. The net. Pot. No. Net. 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 The pot. Correct. Fish to net. Pot. Pot to the? Net. 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 Then to the pot. Okay. From, from the fish to the net, from net, the net, net to the net, fisherman, net. from fisherman to the pot, pot. from pot. pot to the water, water. water. from water to mud. Mud. mud, mud, from mud to grass, 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 grass. grass to horse. 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 horse, horse. Very good. Now you are terrific, wonderful. Now I am going to ask the next question. How did you remember? Did you all write down the words? No. No. How did you remember? Very related the story. Associations. Associations. Yeah, the so, so it's not written on my face, is it? <laughs> oh. so we how, were totally into it, ma'am. Like, so. Yeah, but I can I can yeah, I can even tell you fossil and fairies, fossil and riches, riches and riches. It can be totally into my closet, but you can't read all, isn't it? You are picturing everything in our minds. Ah, very good. Excellent. You formed Shivangi very good. So you made, as I was narrating, you saw pictures, isn't it? Yeah. So we associate through pictures. So how should, how should a teacher be? A teacher 
should be able to tell something which helps the child to see the story. Okay, most of us tell the story. Once upon a time, there was a crow who was very thirsty, even looking for water everywhere, and then, mm-hmm. and then you know what happened? That he found the tug of water. We all know that story, right? And he put that stone. Said, "Will the child remember anything?" So no. it's nice when you pause, when you are slow, and when you can help the child to see the story. Okay, so. When I was returning home last evening, gadaram, 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 suddenly there was a lot of sound and dust and pam, pam, pam sound. And I was at the signal. And then, ooh, rain started falling. And then I was looking, oh my God, I, I forgot where the viper is in my car. And all the water, ooh, and I couldn't see anything. You see? Did you see what I saw? Yeah. So yeah. when when you tell something, if you can make it make your audience see it, it will be wonderful. And that's another connect that you can have. And what we call these kind of stories are also called associated stories or chain stories. Now these chain stories are mostly tales that are all around the world. It, it is mainly from folk tales. Most of the folk tales told around the fire, which people remembered, were in the form of chain stories. Okay? So what happened one day when a man climbed up that coconut tree? Ah, what happened? He was about to cut the coconuts, yeah? I know, but with what? With the axe. Then what happened? Then the bee came. And what did the bee do? Tom! And then what happened? He dropped the axe. Then his wife was waiting down with a sack because she thought her husband is going to drop coconuts. But what came down? The axe. And the wife got scared and she moved. And when she moved, she sang the uh, uh, the last tip of the snake. Oh, and the snake got scared. And the snake went into a hole. And whose hole was that? It was a little mouse. And he said, oh God, I didn't welcome this guest at all. And brrr, ran out. And brrr, climbed another tree. And then when this mouse climbed that tree, there were birds. And one mother bird who was looking after her little ones saw this mouse coming up and did back, back, back. Now there was a monkey and that monkey was just resting after doing all the mischief and he was about to eat a fruit and when this bird mm. made back, 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 back sound, he dropped the fruit. And where did that fruit go? Fell down and dung on an elephant's head. And what did the elephant do? <laughs> Got scared and started running and he went over an ant hill. And that ant hill went and <laughs> crushed three eggs. Now, who had laid those three eggs? <laughs> the hen, right? Now, the rooster was very sad. So, next day morning, usually you'll go up on the roof and do <laughs> right? And crow in the morning. And that's when the sun would rise in those days. What happened the next day? Because the rooster didn't crow, the sun also was sleeping. And there was total darkness. Oh. And then all the animals, the tiger, the lion, what's happening? What's happening? Yeah, what's happening? The peacock. Everyone went and said, let's go to the creator and ask him what happened. In those days, the creator was very close to creation, right? Now we don't know where he has disappeared. Anyway, so they went to the creator's house and the creator said, come in, it's open. And he was deep in meditation. And at that time they said, you know, it's very dark. And he said, yeah, it's very dark. No, no, open your eyes. It's really very dark. So the creator opened his eyes and he said, how did it become so dark? 
He said, don't ask us. That's why we've come to you. He said, what happened to the sun? We don't know. So then he said, hey, Surya, come out. And Surya got up. Ah, and he came. And then they asked Surya. Brahma asked Surya, what happened here? Why didn't you get up? Don't ask me, ask the rooster. The rooster said, don't ask me. Because what happened? All my eggs got crushed because the anthill went on the eggs. Because the elephant went on the anthill. Because the fruit fell on the elephant's head. Because a monkey dropped a fruit. And because the birds made a sound. Because the mouse climbed up the tree. Because the snake entered the mouse's house. Because the lady stamped the tail of the snake. And because the ant came down. And all because this beam came and stung. <laughs> so everyone asked, so who is to be blamed? So everyone said, who, whose fault was it? The person. Huh? Whose fault? The bee. See, the man who went. <laughs> <laughs> Why did the man climb the tree? Ah, the, man, the, man, the, man. the man who went to cut the tree. The man who went to cut the tree was his fault? No. Or was it his fault that the sun did not rise? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> each one started telling something except taking the responsibility on themselves. Everyone said that one should be blamed, this one should be blamed. And we do this in our community of teachers. In our corporate field, everywhere we blame somebody else, right? Except ourselves. Okay, so here, that's what happened. And finally, the creator said, okay, the immediate people are the hen and the sun. And he took a promise. He told the sun, if you don't rise every morning, we'll be in big trouble. So no matter what happens, don't depend on the rooster. Don't depend on anyone. You have to promise me that you will rise every day and they say and then he told the rooster you can always produce eggs especially in india there's no problem of reproduction isn't it so <laughs> <laughs> he said no don't lose water because you didn't crow hey, whatever happens just get up in the morning and give your shout so they say from that day onwards the rooster has always crowed and the sun has always risen. Yeah. So again, if you tell a story now, in from the story, we can teach anything to the children, isn't it? Tell them the story. Yes, Once they get interested, can you not teach science? Can you talk, not teach about insects? Can you not teach about trees? Yeah. You can talk about uh, associated verbs. You can uh, tell them to give a descriptive word. You can ask them about the lifestyle of uh, uh, what, what, where does a snake live? What are the holes or the homes of the animals called? Anything you want. Because once you tell them a story, they're so interested. Now they are ready to learn the facts. So all you have to do is to tell them, get them interested in the person who's standing before them in the classroom and they love you. They love you so much they wouldn't want you to leave at all. Now the children are waiting when the teacher will leave and go, isn't it? So I would say there are many ways, there are innumerable ways of making a classroom interesting, of making lessons and concepts interesting. All you have to do is be thorough with your preparation. Time your story. Be clear about the story. Be compassionate about the story. Be confident about the story. And then you will realize that how will the children, they don't even have to write down. When they listen with interest, they retain, they recall, and they retell. Remember the three R's. Retain, recall, retain. This is all that you have to first step when you start telling a story. 
once these three C's, compassion, confidence, and clarity is within a tutor, then the listener will retain, recall, and retell. One of the most important pillars of a story is belief. Believe in yourself, believe in what you are transmitting to your student. Yes, of course, there are lots of different ways. You can show them a prop, you can uh, do it through a puppet, all that, you know, it, it's, it's not very difficult, but you have to be thorough in whatever, what, 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 don't, wait, I'm going to tell them about you. Yeah, so, yeah, so, okay. So this is, this is, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I haven't forgotten your name, okay? So this is Kaka, uh, and he wants to say hello to you. Uh, can, can all of you say hello to him? Everyone saying hello to you. Hello. Hello, Hello, Taka. Namaste, namaste. Very good. You see, I, I don't have time to, quickly I'll tell you a story, okay. So once upon a time there was Kaka because he won't leave me if I don't tell the story. He went Kaka looking for water. Then he found a little pot of water, but there was very little water in that pot. So he began to think what to do, what to do, what to do, what to do. And then ha, he found some stones. So he took one stone. I put the stones one by one and the water came up, 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 so happy. <laughs> Drank the water, flew away happy. Yeah? So, are you happy that I told you a story? Can you say bye to them? There, there, there. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. So, all you have to do is just see how you want to manipulate the puppet, when you want to use the puppet. Yeah, did you want to listen to? Okay, bye. So, just, just see what you want to use as a pro. When do you want to use the pro? You want to add a musical instrument, but all that is the second stage. The first stage, as I told you, is to be happy, prepared with what you have to say. Choose your story, read it aloud, listen to your own voice. You don't have to be perfect because we can't climb Mount Everest in a day. Tell yourselves that you are capable. Most of them say, oh, ma'am, we can't tell the story like you. Don't compare. There's no competition here. Each one of us has the strength as a teacher and a comedian. So all you have to do is tap yourself and say, I am capable. I can. Right? So every one of us can. Yeah? Just have that confidence in you. Be sincere with yourself. Do your research. Be prepared, even if it is just a class, for the little tiny ones. Okay, so that's all I have to say today because there's lots that I would like to share. We also run a three-day course in storytelling. We call it the beginner's course in storytelling. Our next course is on April 24th of this month. If you go on to uh, katalia.org, you'll find all the details. I'll give you the details here. And uh, you can also write to us. You can also uh, WhatsApp. All you have to do is to just go and do a little bit of your homework and let us know and we'd be very happy to invite you uh, to be a person to facilitate with, uh, with us. We both are learners in this journey, yes? We keep learning from each other. So uh, I think I've been talking a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think I'll stop here and I would love to have any questions or doubts that you may want to ask, uh, probably you can raise your hands and just tell your name and uh, I'll be very glad to answer. You. Yeah. So you can uh, raise your hand or you can even unmute and uh, start asking the question. Uh, it was really enthralling experience, I would say. <laughs>
it was like uh, being transformed uh, transported into another world and your the way you modulated your voice i mean uh, it's really really very interesting i i was a primary school teacher for some years and i totally understand uh, why these uh, noise making it, it is so important uh, you know when in ncert they introduced uh, these stories and they had some uh, uh, strange voices and strange uh, words which indicate uh, voices of the birds or uh, voices of the animals they were introduced into that there were a lot of teachers who were discussing like why why do we have to even uh, do this in a hindi or a english class like why do we have to use these nonsense words but these nonsense words were so very much loved by all the children in the class and i uh, understand how much uh, engagement can be really uh, powerful when we use the story way as you say yeah like thank you i often use the word when a man was selling tomatoes and a tomato fell off and it went yeah. you know so yes. uh, when when you and everyone can relate to this song but yes yeah so <laughs> i think uh, sometimes it makes no sense and it makes yet a lot of sense yeah, yeah. so questions please yeah. questions hello ma'am yes. uh, ma'am i am an aspiring teacher i am still learning to be become one so ma'am uh, as uh, i i will be teaching a lot of kids in the future so ma'am what do you think is the might like can you please give me some advice for uh, like the one thing that i should remember all of my uh, like throughout my journey as a teacher because i completely enjoyed this session and i was it was like a uh, amazing experience so thank you uh, the very fact that you are asking a question means you are open to learning and i think that's the first step never be satisfied with what you have learned remember that learning happens throughout life so keep yourselves always open to learn that is the first step i would say so uh, uh, we, we remember children are very intelligent and we are in a, a digital world so they learn a lot from the net tools so uh, uh, don't feel bogged down don't give up hope uh, keep your uh, excitement alive uh, very important to say i'm excited this morning oh it's the same sun that's rising every morning oh my god and you can always say ah, today the sunrise is so beautiful i'm waiting for tomorrow's sunrise i'll wake up early just to see the sunrise yeah so it's your attitude your openness and once you're open to learning and you're positive you can spread that positivity among your children yeah so thank you i think you just continue as you are yes manisha yes ma'am uh, ma'am i teach uh, english as well as geography okay uh, english able to use storytelling or sound or make associations with geography sometimes i find it a, i do take real life examples i help them make connections but i feel the engagement can still be better uh, how could i prepare for this is what my question was ah so i used to do a lot of things in my i was also a geography and history teacher so uh, for me the challenge was how to make it interesting that's when i actually began to uh use stories so i used to tell them to close their eyes and imagine that they are a rock now i had this very boring lesson of lithosphere and uh, you know yeah. all that so i told them imagine you are a rock and all the children will be so happy and imagine you have a crack on your head and there is this uh, uh sun going inside you and you're feeling now very hot you see it's the summer season and you are not having a proportionate kind of a body you are as big as a football but you are not having a perfect round because you are having rough edges and then afterwards the season goes by and then i used to ask them to imagine that they are freezing and then the rain comes and then from top you know all the other stones start and then they start going down 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 and then the uh, breaks and becomes lot of different uh, uh, stones and that so the metamorphosis the entire mm -hmm. thing metamorphic rock mm -hmm. the sedimentary rock uh, you know then mm -hmm. being washed and becoming a crystalline rock 
finally i should say went under the ground and down it became so hot woo came out as a volcanic rock and out of the earth became a magma so you see the whole process of this rock through just an experience for the children by closing that they were so excited and then i i used to tell them okay now you're a crystal and rock what gem do you want to be okay yeah so you can can you help them to experience i'm not saying everything can be done like that but some of it if you help them to experience right. they, some of this they know what is a metamorphic rock right. what is a sedimentary rock yeah just a little tip and you can like no ma'am thank you yeah. thank you there was a good opening for me thank you very much thank you yes anyone else uh namaste ma'am i'm varsha tripathi yes uh, actually i am a mathematics teacher and i teach primary classes actually okay. so i just wanted your suggestion so like how can i uh, like, like how can storytelling help me in my subject like in mathematics especially for primary stage uh, okay so primary stage when you say it's classes 1 to 4 and i think uh, yeah, different yes 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 you have numbers you have combinations uh you know yes. and you have division multiplication so many exactly things, right? so the one of the things i used to do is uh, for instance that e story i don't know if you listen to that um uh, when uh, when the housefly forgot his name he went to the cow he went to the cow right yes yes i i listen yeah. yes so uh, one is how many characters in that story a exactly and then you can go a little deeper what fraction suppose you wanted to add one more character what would you like to add in that story which will become the 14th character what if you okay. want to delete one of the characters which character would you want to delete from that story that's all that brings you the minus and uh, addition itself immediately isn't it exactly exactly yeah. I, i got that it you use the story as a base that's the best how many cells do you think that a uh, leaf has the creeper has what kind of creepers do we have okay and the okay. stalk stands on one leg which are the birds that stand just on one leg what is one an odd number or an even number okay yes yes i got it that is right ma'am if i could also uh, add uh, because uh, maths is something that i have also been engaged in so i i think uh, you know what happens is we think of mathematics too much as a calculation and if we think uh in which situations which context uh, mathematics can be brought out like the story that you just said right now so there are stories that are happening all around us you just need to take that up make it interesting and use it in the classroom addition will, will involve bringing things together um uh, subtraction will involve taking things apart the multiplication will involve making several copies of it if the duck exactly. is giving exactly. uh, eggs uh, four eggs uh, every week in how many weeks it will be uh, 48 so these yeah. kind of things uh, can be asked the division again making exactly. uh, if you are sharing a cake and there are so many people how will you share uh, will the share increase uh, if there are um, uh, more people sharing more people. it will the, or yeah. will the share decrease so exactly. i mean there are so many stories and you can it's it's important to make the stories relatable uh, i feel uh, with the uh, students as you have also demonstrated because you have taken all the stories which are happening uh, which we are very familiar with and very relatable and you have put voice modulation and make it so interesting for us yeah yeah okay so thank you ma'am thank you ruchi ma'am thank you ma'am so, uh, you can you can you need not also be very direct you can just tell them a story yeah. and still yeah. be yeah. 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 okay yes sorry was uh, anyone trying to ask a question yeah this is ram here i have a question i thought somebody accidentally yeah. unmuted yeah itishri yes Ram, yeah. I'll go after Itishri. Itishri. Yeah, Itishri. Yes. Hello. 
all right i'll go ahead with my question yeah. uh, so man thank you so much for the wonderful session i think it was a wonderful learning opportunity for me i've told stories but i've not narrated them the way you've done I, it it was an eye opener in more than one ways for me um so there are two elements that i could observe in the story one was you actually um um make associations with facts that we uh, observe around us and you weave them into the story that was one thing that came out really obviously and the second one was you um, when you gave the example of the formation of stones you know, the different types of rocks uh, it was it was so nice to see that we are you actually um, uh, kind of dramatize the event that happens the event right. so are there any other elements that one could keep in mind when they want to try say if i want to try to make a story um, in some concept in science Right. Association seems to be one, and uh, events, actions that happen, we could probably try to uh, dramatize them or put it in a way that a child could really get excited about. Are there other things that we should or we could pay attention to? Uh, I think the best is to know what is your strength. Let me be very honest with you. Uh, what you feel deep down in your heart, for instance, when you show a child. Uh, Okay, when you show a child uh, a little bird, a new bird that is flying across, okay, you don't think at that time about whether it's a migratory bird, what is the name of that bird, or watch how its wingspan is. Uh, just, just see, uh, see that beak of that bird. You don't say that. You just say, "Wow, look at that beautiful bird." So let the child absorb that beauty first, because you are. so you are only a facilitator and you are a pointer and that can happen uh, the, the learning also happens only when you point out something to the child the child can actually uh, take the whole thing so it's not necessary that the teacher has to say it all this is the first lesson i thought i should tell you that you don't have to be this clown you don't have to be this entertainer and keep on trying to make everything interesting and possible but show them the way and let them come up with whatever they have to do yes so you don't have to be dramatic also you don't have to be maybe you can even show them a picture maybe chitra katas there's another way like you can use chitras you can you can use a, a plain wall uh, when i when i learned french the french teacher never spoke to me in english all of us didn't understand french but i remember he showed a plain wall and he said le mur le mur that's when we knew the wall was called in french le mur so we do, he didn't have, he didn't show us picture he did he just said it so i think words are the best when you are uh, are well prepared and you can actually appeal to the child and help him to understand in a calm and composed manner not in a hurry then anything can be learned yes so you 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 see what is your strength what is your strength and you can start doing it and you can make anything interesting that way because when you're interested in learning you're transmitting that to the child Yes, ma'am. I hope. I think that right. yes, ma'am. That actually uh, clarifies my doubt. I was like, how do I act, or how do I, you know, yeah. do uh, present in a way that the child can uh, find it engaging? But I think what you said just now makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much. Oh, welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. Repeat, yes. Ah, uh, repeat. Yeah, Doctor Patil. Yeah, anyone. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Good evening. I'm so happy to understand, uh, attend this, and understand everything very thoroughly. Mm -hmm. I am uh, right now forty-seven, and still, whatever was happening right from beginning, many examples. I re I am in the education, but I am in higher education. But still, oh. I me I think that hearing is happening, ma'am. Yeah. listening is a skill and really it's a time to inculcate in our student and i think that journey has to begin from me 
So I as I promise in text that I will do it. So I will definitely take it away with me for longer time. That draft my story, make my topic into uh, in the form of story, or try to make in a chain form that my student, my children will remember for longer period of time. And thank you for introducing three different R in education. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much from bottom of my heart. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Thank you for your job. Yes, I think Tripti had something to ask. Or... Yeah. Yes. Tripti Jha. I think I'm not sure if she is there now. Oh, okay. Fine. Yeah. So, uh, Chitra, uh, I ask you to give a vote of thanks, please. Thank you, Geeta, ma'am, for this very enlightening session. Uh, this last hour has been a very enlightening journey for all of us. We were all enthralled and mesmerized with the story and a lot of learning we have got from it. Uh, we got to understand the pers uh, we got to understand from the perspective of students and uh, we also got to know uh, the interesting insights about uh, the term association and tale stories and how we can engage students to the art of storytelling in the end i would like to reiterate our deepest gratitude from the center of excellence in teacher education and tata institute of social science mumbai to you and to have graced us with your presence this afternoon. I would also like to thank faculties and all the other attendees. Once again, I thank, I thank one and all present here. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you to all the listeners and all those who believed and attended this session. Thank you, Richie. And thank you to your institution uh, for doing such a wonderful job. And uh, I look forward to be associated in future. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you all and all the best. Thank you. Thank you, uh, madam. Thank you, ma'am. Also, participants, please uh, fill the thank feedback you. form before you leave. Thank you, madam.